Kalyan, as a coach, uh, you've been having an external perspective, you know, of the actual benefits or otherwise. What have been your experience about the actual benefits? Um, so, I, I guess um, if I were to put sort of uh, without, uh, at the risk of broad brushing the industry, which is very difficult to do, uh, our experience is that if people adopt the intent of last planner and after that transition happened uh, and you've resolved that conflict that Professor just, Koshi just spoke about, we feel that you can easily hit about a 25 to 40 percent improvement in civil activities like poor cycle times, um, you know, um, just uh, poor, uh, you know, civil completion activities. MEP is a little bit of a bigger challenge only because there's a lot more inter-trade coordination that happens there. And there, there's a lot more inter-organizational conflict that, I mean, if you thought civil was uh, itself a challenge, you're kind of multiplying that challenge by bringing multiple organizations and all that stuff in MEP. But even there, if you sort of, I mean, we've done some uh, engagements wherein we've tried to do measure uh, PPCs uh, and completion times of like a bathroom completion in a commercial real estate project. Kind of. There also, we're able to see about 15 to 25 percent uh, improvement in cycle time or reduction in cycle time. So when it comes to MEP, it's a bigger challenge, multiplied challenge, but the benefits are de definitely uh, really there. Um, and I, I know we're talking last planner, uh, but the other place where it's a little more easier wins or, or uh, low hanging fruit, if you will, is wherever you do value stream mapping. So uh, Mr. Mohan Babu mentioned root cause, right? So where you identify those failures of those root cause and you do some VSMs, you're able to find some quicker wins and that kind of boosts the energy of the team to sort of come back and say, okay, let's adopt this, right? So civil, MEP and BSM are the three areas that we've broadly seen benefits. Thank you. Dr. <clears throat> Koshi, you mentioned something about, uh, you know, a different uh, uh, way of looking at the benefits. Uh, what happens then, you know, as a result of it, you get more benefits and so on. What do you think of the enablers? How can we push, you know, the CPS implementation in project sites? So people are able to get benefits, you know, more easily, right. faster and so on. Right. So, so to me, uh, I look at this from, again, going back a bit to the organization level, there is a top down and a bottom up requirement in an organization. When I say top down, it means management has to support the process of implementing CPS or LPS. Management has to, you know, look for reports, looking at PPC, look at, you know, how did you do constraint analysis? This has to be the top down. The bottom up is your people have to be trained. As Mr. Mohan Babu said, they have to learn the language of lean. They have to understand the language of lean. And they should be able to enable this requirement from the management to be able to implement the processes, be able to generate those reports, be meaningful and take action on it. So in general, I would look at it from both the management should know how to make policies <laughs> which require the CPS based approach to be implemented. And then the field and the middle management and below should know how to respond to this policy to give meaningful reports to the management. Very good, so this is the way I would look at it. I have, I have one more point, Professor Adwan. In terms of uh, both LPS and Lean, from the people point of view, I think LPS brings in this concept of a promise of what, uh, you know, a crew or a team makes a promise and, you know, why they don't keep it. So this is something which is also very important as to a lot of times we are very optimistic in how we make promises. So at the core level, an LPS system should be should make us more realistic or be able to take responsibility for promises not kept. And to me, this is also a very, very core element in how uh, a team kind of transitions from a regular planning system where promises are made and probably not kept because of various interrelationships to be able to try to understand where these go wrong and how to keep and understand how promises are kept. Yeah, very good. So Kalyan, what has been your uh, experience? Uh, what actually pushes, uh, you know, the implementation of CPS? Um, so at an individual site level, our experience... As, as a coach. Yeah, 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 agreed. At an individual site level, our experience is that if the project manager of the site has not, does not have the belief, whatever be the reason for it, Right. He, if he or she thinks it is the same as LPS, what I'm doing is the same as my monthly planning exercise or whatever it is, then it's very difficult to imbibe that thing at an individual site level. The next thing is, of course, at the organization level. And there we feel that unless 
there is a strong management commitment to almost transform the way you're doing business. I think we spoke about it, right? So if, if you're still expecting me to do reports uh, the way I'm supposed to traditionally do, but you're also expecting me to practice last planner and any sort of associated discussions and reports, it looks like double work. So yeah. unless you start st uh, almost unlearning or removing parallel systems and processes and sort of aligning everything in one way and making this the way of life, so to speak, then we feel that, uh, you know, you cannot uh, create that enablers that you want. So management support at the top, project managers belief. So the middle people who have a little bit of experience, they should be willing to unlearn to relearn. And unless that willingness to unlearn is there, I mean, again, I've had experience where the project manager will come and say, don't tell Kalyan's team whatever he wants. No, he's like a spy on uh, 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 to the HO on our behalf. Right? So that that it is a it is a learning experience. So I think that's one thing. The other thing I would say is when you do scaled uh, implementations, and I've had one experience doing this for Shapurji, wherein we were told to go to all of their projects in their Bangalore region and say, I'll give you about three weeks to sort of teach them LPS, VSM, right? And the metric of measure was after you have left the site as a coach, how many of them are still practicing? So success is not what you're doing when you're there. Success is what you're doing after you've left. <laughs> to be fair, I think we did that in about six sites and at least three of them were practicing three months later. And of course, we so we in a sense, we were able to create organizational capacity to, to learn that. And URC is a prime example of it. Shapuji is another experience that, that I'm talking about. And the last thing that I would say is, in, there are places where we've seen LPS as a firefighting tool. After the project is already in trouble, they will come and hire a, a, a consultant and say, can you fix this loss making project into a profit making project within one month or so. And so that's not the, it has to be a, a, a thing that you should bring up front more as a strategy rather than a band aid that you will sort of bring middle course to sort of say that, you know, L LPS can fix it kind of a thing. LPS can't fix it. Right? It has to be the strategy that will fix it. So, yeah. In those six sites, you should have put webcams. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mohan Babu, you heard both these uh, versions of what, you know, makes it a success. From the implementation level in the projects, what has been your experience on what makes it uh, click? The implementation process, uh, what we face this, uh, uh, First is for the uh, uh, people uh, awareness, that is one thing. Because, uh, and also when I am training the people, if my colleagues are more than 20 people, people are uh, trained, well trained. But uh, see, people are uh, sh uh, shuffling because they are transferred to switch over to other companies. If other companies, if they transfer or uh, they, they jointed, newly jointed, then that company, they are not uh, going to be used any LPS and model and all. Okay, but my, my planning engineers trained 20 people and they in 10 people, they went to other organization. But in that other, other organization, they are not doing the LPS and all. So that area I am facing the problem because the continuity is not getting uh, properly. The continuity is not getting because the people are spreading after training. Then I have another one more challenge. Uh, after training, uh, people are getting it. Then the client requirements. See, uh, some of the uh, government companies right now, uh, like metros and all, they are contractually, they made these, these are the requirements are required, like beams and whatever maybe. Then my management and my project managers are willing to do that uh, lean practices and beam implementations and everything in the contractual manner. So if you say the 18 sites in the 10 sites, it's already in the contract. So the peoples are implementing uh, for the lean beams and whatever what we are using that. But remaining eight sites like uh, private limiteds, some owners related uh, real estate projects, then hospital project, they, that area and all, they are not uh, making any contractual requirement for the BIM or LPS. But still we are practicing that site also. But what benefit we got this in that uh, eight states, where the lane is not required, that side, the client is also supporting because there no, there is a transparency in this implementing the lane. Every minutes of meeting previously, what happened? They made some lot of designs and drawings and everything they are discussing. 
now the constraint log only they are discussing avcm minutes of meeting this is what my uh, outcome because uh, as a lean practitioner lean champion previously there is a lot of minutes of meeting there is a format now the client is asking where is the constraint log and why this is not re resolved and what is the revision date we have the constraint log i think so in the lean so the project manager and client i am talking about the who is not aware of the uh, lean and contractually it is not deemed that also client is now realized it's useful things only it is a very specific problem and we are addressing so the projects also it's going very smooth i think uh, three four in i told now eight sites the four sites they are selling there this is very useful for this one the continuous improvement for this okay this and all is okay for this then the continuous improvement is uh, quite difficult because what we are talking about we are not talking about the one organization for this lean implementation we are talking about the the entire uh, in indian organization first of all we should uh, align the organization we should uh, uh, call all the organization. like you are you are saying the private limited like this all the 60 40% private limited companies director has to be aligned first so then only whenever my planning engineer is shifted to other side that organization also knows this is the he is the lean champion so we can hire them and we can also try for one or two three sites so this way this will going to be spread in india so otherwise it will be very narrow in my 18 site or maybe 10 to 12 sites only if it is not contractually deemed so this is what i face and uh, this is what the thing sir thanks man. thank you i think i would like to add my experience also this i think first of all the topmost management you know the alignment is very important I think it's best to get a letter addressed by the CEO to the project manager on the site saying thou shall practice lean <laughs> and derive the benefits. That goes a long way. Second thing, the project manager is a very, very key person. Unless he's on board fully, you know, uh, from the bottom of his heart, he should be aligned for practicing lean. Then it works very well. Then third, like you mentioned earlier, the uh, lean champions, you know, you need to have good trained lean champions who know the theory, who can guide the other people and how to do that. And of course, you know, once these three are properly aligned, all the site people here also will, uh, you know, come around to doing that. But the other, let's look at the flip side. What do you think are the uh, disablers, you know, what the ones who are preventing the proper, uh, you know, uh, CPS practice at the various sites? Yeah, I think uh, I would go back to the point I mentioned earlier, saying I think the biggest disabler is that you will find companies which have established systems, you know, strongly established systems would want to follow the system. And if LPS or CPS is slightly outside the system, the kind of uh, inertia or, you know, the resistance to go outside the established system is very strong because they already have an established system. So to me, this is the prime uh, kind of barrier. If you don't have any system, like Kalyan mentioned, it's open to you and you can adopt anything, then adopting uh, this LPS based system, which is very collaborative, which is fairly trust based. Uh, you know, there's a lot of sharing of information going on. This becomes possible. Uh, so to me, I mean, if you want, I mean, that is one, then there are definitely uh, other elements that go with it. For example, proper training, proper understanding of terminology, you know, practice and training going hand in hand. So there are several other issues that go along with this too. Okay, thank you. What have been your experience, uh, Kalyan, the disablers at the sites? Um, I I'm going to recharacterize disablers as misalignments <laughs> with your permission, sir. So I guess uh, so the one thing that we find is that so whatever we do, we would we'll be training one entity or one organization in the project. Like URC is a contractor or SPCL is a contractor, like I mentioned, or we work with owners like Trill. But a project is multiple organizations. So until the alignment is done for the project, then you know you find that somewhere you get stuck. Like, like I mean, again, I use uh, since URC is there, I will use URC as an example. Like URC might be practicing, but their boundary of limits is their contractual boundary. If they try to create a constraint log or if they try to pull transparent information from you know their finishing contractor or their design, there might find some resistance there. So the project versus the organization is one misalignment we find. The second thing we find is that uh, 
um, again, <laughs> um, not to just to characterize this. So people think of LPS as a process. And our own experience is that after a while, it's more about the culture. I, I, I mean, Professor Koshi said that earlier. So we say that you should recognize that bad news early is good information. That's what constraint logs are. That's what transparency is, right? So unless you're able to create, elevate that thing, it's not about the process. It's not about the mechanics of filling out the cultural, uh, the transparent, sorry, the, the constraint log or the weekly plan. But it's about the culture of saying that bad news shared early outside will not have a negative contractual impact on me or something like that and therefore I'm happy to do it is the, is the second misalignment. Third is, uh, I mean, related to that is the contractual misalignment, right? So, so our contracts are written with which, which kind of disallow that transparency. So we are all worried about the LD more than you're worried about trying to earn the benefits of early completion, if you will, right? So that's the third. And the fourth one is the technology, right? So a lot of us are talking, I mean, I being a technology practitioner, I have to bring technology. Everybody is looking at digitization, BIM and all of, and they all are confused, right? Is BIM lean or is if I practice BIM, am I doing anti-lean or I don't know, right? So there is a little bit of, so unless the technology backends that we use to enable are also aligned with the lean thinking, lean language that, that, that Mr. Mohan Babu was talking about, you find, so in our, it, it, to summarize, misalignments are the disablers. And misalignments are at the cultural level, at the process level, and at the technology and the contractual level. So unless I figure out a way to align all of these, there's some friction in the system.